Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. After the release of the very sensual Roland R8M episode, I was surprised to find out that you guys really seem to like those late 80s, early 90s Roland Rack units that, to be honest, all look the same to me. One piece of gear that came up in the comments quite frequently is the Roland D110 multi-timbral sound module. And I don't know if this is an Austrian thing, but there seem to be so many of them around here that they are almost sold by the pound. Roland released this rack version of the D10 in 1988 in order to make the LA synthesis of the D50 flagship instrument available to a larger and more budget conscious target group. Although the tech behind it was completely different, the D50 and LA synthesis in general was Roland's answer to Yamaha's traumatizingly successful 1983 FM synth pioneer, the DX7. In this context, LA is not a shoutout to West Coast style synth based hip hop, but it is the abbreviation for a linear arithmetic synthesis. Roland was seriously lagging behind Yamaha's, at least for the time, super innovative synth technology. And they came up with a not so innovative solution for that problem. They took a bunch of very short samples, mainly of the attack phase of acoustic and electronic musical instruments, and combined it with a digital subtractive synth for the body of the tone. Don't get me wrong, while this method was not as groundbreaking as mass market ready FM synthesis in the 80s, the tones of the D50 and its successors are still to this day loved by many. At the first glance, the Roland D110 is not ticking many of my boxes. Tiny display, check. Generic buttons for relentless menu diving, check. A slot for memory cards whose sole purpose was to fund the truffles on the fancy pasta of 80s Roland executives, check. In spite of its multiple outputs, this doesn't look like a lot of fun. To add insult to injury, the buttons of my unit have seen better days. Depending on temperature, atmospheric humidity, lunar phase and water levels of the Danube River, it takes between 0.5 and 10 button presses for the unit to realize that I want to talk to it. Obviously a rather common issue. The presets are as 80s as it gets. Standard Roland drum samples, classic bread and butter sounds like strings and brass, nice roads and clef patches, plenty of Reagan era style crimes, and a piano that, of course, has to be played at 127 velocity exclusively. Have you ever filled out your text form while tripping on psychedelic drugs? I haven't, but it can't be any more intimidating and frustrating than the menu structure of the D110. After working with so many digital Roland instruments from the 80s and 90s, I still had to read the manual twice to locate the parameters of the subtractive synth engine and it seems like I'm not the only one. Speaking of parameters, the D110 has a lot of them. Everything you can do with it at the same time is combined in a patch with three global parameters for the built-in reverb. A patch has 8 parts with 12 parameters each and a rhythm part with 3. A part is linked to a tone with another 7 so-called common parameters and a tone consists of 4 partials which can either be a rumpler voice or a subtractive synthesizer engine. Depending on its nature, a partial can have up to 59 parameters for all the stuff we would expect from a normal synth, including sophisticated envelopes, LFOs and complex routing options with ring modulation. This very deep engine amounts to, and please correct me if I'm wrong, 2046 parameters. Oh, I totally forgot the Tabre hierarchy level in all this. You know, performance controlling functions such as pitch band and output assignment. Maybe I should switch from Excel to R. Fortunately, there are software editors, but fancy gearheads might prefer the original PG-10 programmer. Given the very reasonable price I paid for the D110 I'm currently using, I was surprised to find out that it can be comparably expensive in other countries. Five years after the release of the DX7, people were already used to complex electronic musical instruments with basic UIs, but I can understand why this parameter madness was, and still is, too much to take for many musicians. You have already heard the D110 in our little intro tune. The vanilla Roland 80s drums just work and I would probably have to dig a little deeper for sounds that are somewhat exciting. I wanna hear it in a hardware sequenced jam with some TC reverb as the Master FX. Bad. 
The sounds are a bit static and dated, but I have yet to take a deep dive into the abyss of the LA synth engine. A word of warning, there were many MIDI dropouts and hanging notes. I really want to know if the D110 can be used as a one oscillator subtractive synthesizer and how it interacts with some proper output gear. That's nothing to be ashamed of. Why are they hiding this more than usable synth in a maze of sub-menus? The user interface is not ideal for live tweaking, but it can be done. Let's use this poison cabinet of late 80s tones in a sleaze rock road wave track with a cyborg clone of young Phil Collins on E-drums. It might have been a bit naive of me to think that I can unlock the full potential of the D110 without using a programmer or software editor. I don't want to come across jealous, but if you're not only able to fully operate this thing without any additional tools, but also think it's fun, you are really smart. As you might have already figured out, I didn't have a lot of fun operating the D110, mainly because of the cryptic UI, but also because the buttons of my unit were close to being unusable. So be careful when you buy one on the used market. I do like the sounds though. Not only is it the 80s sound in a box like the clickbait title indicates, it's also an extremely versatile instrument you can create tones without shoulder pads, leg warmers and Venetian blind shades with. Just like in the DX7 episode, I barely scratched the surface of what this digital monster can do, but this time I refuse to make any more music without a software editor. But that's something for another episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode. Feel free to like and subscribe and don't forget to leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show.